Welcome to Art That Smells. Ugh. Wherever you are right now, pause for a moment, close your eyes, and have a big smell. Go on, take a big sniff. What do you smell? For me, I smell a freshly mopped floor, a tiny bit of armpit, and a vast collection of international contemporary art. But what do you smell, and how does it make you feel? Is it coming from someone next to you, or from something next to you, or from something out of sight? It makes me feel kind of hungry. We normally pay a lot of attention to what we see, what we hear, what we taste, but smell can also tell us lots of important stuff, like where we are right now. Oh, cool. What's happening around us? Yeah. It can also remind us of stuff. Dad? Artist Janis Kunelis once said that for him, the smell of coffee was an idea of traveling, an idea of adventure. Janis was an olfactory artist, which means he used smell to create art. In 1969, Janis created an artwork where he filled seven sacks full of coffee beans and let their aromas drift through the gallery. No, that is cold. As a child, Janis saw sacks of coffee beans like this one. Okay, that's really heavy. Being moved in and out of ships at the busy Greek port where he grew up. And even as an adult, the smell of coffee still reminded him of his childhood. Pretty cool how something invisible like smell can take you to a different time and place. All right, lads, where do you want this then? Lads, why are you ignoring me? Because that's rude. Oh, it's a drawing, that's why. Okay, cool, makes sense. I'll just leave it here then. For artists Audubon and Kange, the smell of coffee is a reminder of the painful history of our Nigerian ancestors. Millions of people in Central and West Africa were taken from their homes and forced to work on farms growing coffee, sugar, tobacco, and spices. Audubon's artwork, Anonesis, filled a hollowed out wall with all these ingredients to represent the mixing of produce and people. The scent of smell was so strong that anyone near the artwork couldn't ignore their scents or their history. Olfactory artists often use very powerful smells to make us stop and think. In his artwork, 2050, sculptor Richard Wilson poured 8,000 litres of recycled engine oil into a room to create a mirror effect like this. That is a lot of oil. That is enough oil to fill 100 bathtubs or 400 sinks or 6,326 pairs of your dad's shoes. The scent of petrol was so strong that it muddled with the visitor's sense of sight, making them question what was the real room and what was the reflection. Isn't it amazing how smell can have that kind of power? Okay, that's weird. Smells are hard to avoid because you can't close your nose, even if you pitch it really hard. Ow. But here's the cool thing about smell. You and your friend can smell the exact same thing, but have very different reactions. Mmm, blue cheese. I think it smells like some socks. Fish. Roasted potatoes. That's disgusting. Ew. Is this blue cheese? Oh, it smells like pudding. It smells quite fragrant. A pumpkin. Roasted turkey at Christmas. That smells of toast. A rotten old bin in like an alleyway or something like that. It smells like, like firewood. It reminds me of like when I go to like get some fish and chips. Is this for cats? Cat food. <laughs> Other olfactory artists have taken a delicious smell and made it so overwhelming that it becomes disgusting. Anya Galaccio painted a room with 40 kilos of dark chocolate and invited visitors to smell it, touch it, and lick it. She was actually trying to show that things that we consider sweet or beautiful, like chocolate or flowers, never last forever and eventually become ugly. After two months, the chocolate had rotted and was covered in mold and bugs. Ew. The artist Annika Yee says, I don't know if I accept good and bad as categories for smell. She thinks our fear of stinky smells has got nothing to do with their scent. In the Tate Modern's Turbine Hall, Annika created an ecosystem of floating machines called air robes. Their habitat was the air that filled the hall, which carried unique soundscapes created by the artist. A soundscape is a combination of different smells that mix together in the air. 
The soundscapes changed weekly and were inspired by a different time in history. So for example, the machine age smelt of oil, burnt coal and pipe tobacco, whereas the Jurassic age smelt of rotten meat, wet earth and farts. So there you have it. Smells can be art too. If you could create some art with your favourite smell, what would you do? I'm creating art.